NFL equipment has kind of come a long way. NFL equipment has drastically evolved, tweaks, redesigns, and in some cases, total overhauls marking eras in league history. The world is ever evolving, and the sports world, the NFL in particular, is no exception. Let us take a look back at the 10 biggest NFL equipment changes over the years. Helmet Even once football players started to wear helmets, there was still a lot of work to be done in making sure that the helmets were up to par to best protect the craniums of the men on the field. In the early days, helmets were made from leather and really didn't even offer all that much protection from head injury. It wasn't until the more modern-looking, plastic-shelled helmets were rolled out in the 1940s that players' domes were more secure. Of course, as the NFL and the world at large have learned more and more about head injuries over the years, the technologies have continued to evolve along with our understanding. In the 90s, there were many Minimum safety standards instituted by the National Operating Committee on Standards for Athletic Equipment. And now, the helmets are as protective as they've ever been. This is largely thanks to the increased use of lighter materials like carbon fiber, as well as more technologically advanced padding on the inside to help cushion the blow. And like everything else in the game these days, and really the world, there are new technologies and sensors built into the helmets themselves to gather data that will help inform future changes to the piece equipment in the future and track measurables that the team, players, and fans are interested in today. Adding a face mask Our younger fans might not know this, but there was a time way back in the olden days when NFL players weren't required to wear face masks. In fact, almost none of them did. The first face mask wasn't worn in the NFL until 1956, meaning that decades of football was played with the nose, mouth, and eyes completely unprotected. Needless to say, adding the face mask to the helmet was a pretty big deal. The first player to ever wear one was Otto Graham, a legendary quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. He did this in 1953 after getting elbowed in the mouth during the first half of a game. His head coach, Paul Brown, taped a piece of plastic across the helmet to ensure that his QB could play the remainder of the game. Talk about thinking on your feet. Anyway, the NFL wised up a few years later, and in 1956, they became required for all players across the league. 3D head scans to customize helmets. I guess with all the money that stands to be made in the football business, it shouldn't come as a huge surprise that the league and its teams leverage some serious modern technology to improve every last detail of the game, even if it might seem like an afterthought to the common fan. For example, the NFL used 3D head scans to create virtual 3D models of the players' heads that they can then design the helmet exactly to. This helps to ensure that every player's helmet is a custom fit that is snugly secured to their head, but also not too tight so that it might restrict blood flow. These scans also also help design each player's helmet so that it fits custom to the curvature of their individual head, as well as monitor the durability and strength of the helmets to ensure that they ultimately meet the NFL standards. The NFL gets a lot of flack for its somewhat questionable player safety policies, but even the most cynical fans out there have to admit that this kind of technology goes a long way in protecting modern players. Shoulder Pads it's always entertaining to look back at old photos and videos from the early days of the NFL. And you just look at how different the shoulder pads that the players wore back then were from what is out there today. Back in the day, it was almost like the players were running around with refrigerators strapped to their shoulders. That's just how bulky and boxy those things were. And somewhat counterintuitively, despite being as big as they were, they didn't even offer as much protection as today's equipment does. Nowadays, shoulder pads have less volume padding, but it is made out of a much more effective material, usually a combination of carbon fiber and even Kevlar, that ultimately helps to absorb the body blows from such a highly physical game. Plus, the design is just a lot sleeker and more minimalistic, which does well to improve the range of motion for players and allows for a way better performance than their predecessors who basically wore small coats of medieval armor out there on the gridiron. The Evolution of Footwear while NFL players did start wearing cleats in the early 1900s, not too long after the sport itself started to pick up in popularity, it took quite a while for the footwear to become as specialized as it is. The first cleats players wore were initially designed for baseball, which considering how different the patterns of movement are in the two sports is not exactly ideal. And it wasn't until the 1940s that the league shifted to rubber cleats as the standard, before eventually outlawing metal spikes altogether. Nowadays, cleats are made of a new material that offer a better grip to the field in more explosive movement, all the while helping the players to avoid injuries. Interestingly, one of the biggest innovations in recent years is that now NFL players have their cleat designed with custom fit tech, which really helps to mitigate some of the wear and tear of the many miles they log in them throughout the season and ultimately their careers. 
going from single bar to full face mask. And like with many other equipment changes in the game, we have seen the face mask continue to evolve with each passing year as well. When people think of this evolution, I would wager that the change to the face mask that players wear has to be one of the first things that come to mind. Those old school images of the player with the one bar wrapped around the low side of the helmet are actually pretty hilarious to look back on now. I mean, I guess they did well to prevent blunt force trauma to the face in the form of a knee or an elbow, but they really didn't do much to protect the eyes, or the nose, or ooh, the mouth. Meaning, it's good that they've since expanded the coverage of the masks. Now they're made of a much more durable material, and in such a way that it covers nearly the entirety of the player's face without limiting their ability to see what is going on in front of them, for obvious reasons. This change has been critical in the evolution of the equipment as a whole, and one of the best that we've seen to date. The original ball. The changes to the ball have had perhaps the most significant impact to the game on the field as anything. I mean, the game is literally called football, so it's kind of crazy to see how much the game's most essential piece of equipment has changed over the years. The original football, used during the late 1800s when the game was in its infancy, was made from inflated pig bladders, and it was much more like a modern rugby ball than the football that we know today. The nature of its antiquated manufacturing process made the ball unpredictably sized and shaped, but it continued to evolve throughout that time period, eventually becoming slightly rounder and heavier. Keep in mind though, this is way back when, even before the forward pass was invented, so they could afford to have a ball designed this way. People weren't airing it out like we've come to see today. After the first forward pass was done in 1906 and the game slowly but surely started to evolve, the ball did so along with it. And once the NFL was formed in 1935, the new league issued its own standard ball that was around 11 inches long and bore a much stronger resemblance to what we see in the league today. Now, it's all become about the passing, and all the tweaks that the league has made to the football itself seem to make throwing it a lot easier for the quarterbacks. Like decreasing the number of panels from 32 to 14 during the early 2000s, then again to 8 with the intention of making the football more aerodynamic. There have also been a handful of design changes that might seem as aesthetically driven, but it is actually to help players see and track the ball better. And now, there are even microchips placed in NFL footballs, and there have been since 2017. These are designed to interact with the sensors and cameras that they placed on the pylons and first down markers to track the ball's movements and location. Yeah, I'd say we've come a really long way since the days of running around with an inflated pig bladder in hand. Guardian Caps while this one might not be common knowledge to a lot of NFL fans out there, even the dedicated ones, NFL players now wear a novel piece of equipment called guardian caps during practice. These are padded helmets that were designed specifically to decrease the risk of concussions by ergonomically absorbing the impact delivered during the course of gameplay. And well, the early indicators have been very promising. Concussions among NFL players mandated to wear guardian cap equipment dropped by more than 50% this summer compared to the previous three-year average, at least according to data released in 2022. This is a pretty significant finding. Hopefully, the continued usage of guardian caps and similar technologies will help mitigate and maybe even eliminate some of the health risks that are associated with playing the game that we all love to watch. Smaller pads everywhere. The shrinking of NFL shoulder pads, particularly in the time since the early 2000s, gets a lot of attention. Significant shrinkage. But you know, in reality, it isn't just the padding on the players' upper bodies that has shrunk. We've actually seen a downsizing in the pads that players wear all over their muscular frames. Either it's thigh and knee pads, which some players don't even wear anymore, or the hip and rib pads, nearly everything is shrinking in a rather dramatic fashion. I guess in a business like the NFL, where mere inches and seconds can be the difference between millions of dollars, if you need to shrink down the padding a little bit to get a bit of an advantage, most players are going to do that without a second thought. And you know what? If I stood to make that much money, I think I would do the same. So hey, who are we to blame? data gathering sensors to track players. With the increased focus on advanced analytics, NFL teams and the media organizations that cover the league have really started to lean on data gathering sensors that allow them to build full data sets on players. This tech is used in a variety of ways. One of the most popular is the GPS sensors to track player speed and the nuances of their movements on the field. There is so much that teams can learn about their players from the data these sensors collect. Whether it's the nuances of route running or something as basic as straight line speed on the field, there is a wealth of knowledge right at their fingertips that can be used to improve performance. A close second is the wearables that teams use to monitor their player output and recovery during games and practice. The vest actually contain a unit in the back 
which on some players you'll be able to see it in between their shoulder blades. That will basically track their how much distance they run, the speeds that they're running, uh, their accelerations and decelerations. And that just basically enables us to make decisions whether a drill is going on too long in terms of a physical standpoint or if we've highlighted a player that's at risk of injury, whether we need to modify or change the drill. So needless to say, the wearable technology has come a long, long way in recent years. But which do you think was the most significant NFL equipment change? Was there anything that we may have missed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.